Welcome to another in the continuing series of 4-Minute Fridays from TPM. My name is Bruce Harris and I'm a Senior Application Engineer here at TPM. Today we're going to be looking at the parts of Revit that apply to the MEP firms that have changed in 2020. So with that said, let's flip over to Revit and take a look. Now the first thing we're going to look at today is the changes in connecting a panel to a panel. Now I have LP3B here and just so we can follow the loads it has a lighting dwelling unit load on it that's not on LP3A. And what we're going to do is circuit LP3B into LP3A. Now creating that circuit has not changed from previous versions so I'll select the panel I want to create a power system and I'm going to choose the LP3A that I want to connect it to. Now that is not changed, like I said, that's the traditional way we have done it. And what it has done in the traditional format is that it has placed LP3B on LP3A as a circuit. Now what is new is we have the ability to do lug nuts to pass through rather than a circuit. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to click on my LP3B panel. I'm going to go into electrical circuits and I'm going to tell it rather than using a breaker connection type, I'm going to change that to feed through lugs. Now when I do, I'm going to get a message down here from Revit that's telling me that LP3A currently does not have feed through lugs turned on. So when I go enable feed through lugs, what it basically did was turn that ability on on panel LP3A. Now there is another way you can do it if I click on LP3A and look at the properties of LP3A. This is that new setting right here for feed through lugs. So here is the feed through lug setting here. So now when I go to my LP3 panel, I no longer have LP3B connected via a circuit. It's connected via lug nuts. Now it still has the load it's passing down, so all that is correct. Now as you notice here, LP3A is numbered 1 through 20. And if I go to LP3B, it also is numbered 1 through 20. So what I'd like to do is change the numbering sequence. So I'm going to go to LP3B, over here in Properties, go down to the Circuit Numbering option, and change from Default to Continue Numbering. Now when I do that, it renumbers panel B, so it starts where panel A left off, so it starts with 21 and goes through 40. So those are some of the changes in connecting panel to panel with the new pass-through lug nuts. And of course, if you connect it all the way to this panel, let me go ahead and open up that panel, you'll notice it is passed through and it is on a circuit here, which is correct, and this is LP3A. Now let's go back to our floor plan and talk about another difference here in Revit 2020. So I'm going to go up here to the Manage tab of the ribbon, go to my MEP settings, and go to my electrical settings. Now if I go here to wiring, we have a couple new settings. The first thing is the ability to change what your arrow home run style looks like so you can annotate it more like what you want. Right now I've got a 20 degree arrow turned on. Let's do an open arrow just so you can see a vast difference. So now we have an open arrow on the end of our home runs. Now going back to this setting. I'm going to change it back to my 20 degree fill and talk about the other setting that we have here. 
This allows us to control what happens when we have multi-circuit runs and the home run for that. Are we going to put multiple arrows on that home run? You're going to leave it as a single arrow. Are we going to have multiple arrows on the end wire only or a single arrow on the end wire only? So right now it's set to multiple arrows. So if I were to connect this circuit into this circuit to create a multi-circuit run. Let me just get that out of the way. So now I have two arrows down here on my home run here and I continue to have an arrow here. That's the way I'd like to look at it but if you like to look at it differently I could say only have arrows on my home run and have multiple arrows let's say. So now I have multiple arrows on my final home run, but my connection, I do not have an arrow. So that's just a choice you have on the way you want to display these particular home run arrows. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the new built-in parameter for elevation. It was on a few devices in previous versions, but it wasn't a built-in elevation. So therefore, it wasn't available for tags, schedules, and view filters. So now it's a built-in parameter, so it is available for all those different purposes. And it's also available on a wider array of objects in Revit. So this is a list of objects that this elevation is now a part of. So let's take a look at it. So what we're talking about is a new parameter and it is a system parameter so it is available in those tags and filters and schedules like I mentioned before. Now, we had this elevation in several objects, but it wasn't a system parameter, so we could not do those um, things that I just mentioned with it. So here is that elevation from level that I'm talking about right here. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to a schedule, and I'm going to add that parameter to this schedule. So it is now available for scheduling. So I'm going to choose elevation from level and put it over here in our schedule. And now we have an elevation over here for our object in our schedule. So now I've switched to a tiled view and I have a section view of a couple receptacles on a wall over here and the schedule we were just looking at here. Now this is the meeting room 306, so if I go over here and change the value here, then we can see the corresponding object changes here. Now, you know, obvious Revit stuff here, I can go over here and change the tag, so I can change it to, so I can now change elevations in schedules and tags and display elevations in tags. So what we're going to talk about last is a change that started in 2019.2. In that version it applied to ducts, conduit, and cable tray. Now in 2020 they've added this to pipes as well. Now it's really not something new, it's more of a different way of describing it, more of a clarification of what point that you're working from. So when I go to draw a pipe, my justification up here is described more in depth. Instead of just saying elevation, it's saying middle elevation. Now if I change my justification to say top, then it would say top elevation up here. So they're just trying to clarify what elevation that you're working from. So when I draw something, I'm now based on a top elevation of this number 
but it's still going to continue to display the middle elevation once something is drawn. Now there haven't been a whole lot of changes in 2020 for the MEP industry, but there are some very nice changes in base Revit. That will be covered in a webinar series that Pat Hill is going to be doing in the next few weeks. So please look forward to that. And once again, it was great having you watch our 4-Minute Friday. Thank you for watching another in our continuing series of 4-Minute Fridays from TPM. Look for us at TPM.com or you can subscribe to TPM Solutions channel on YouTube. Once again, thank you for watching.